Hello. This is the Glass Hour Top 5 for the week of October 22nd. I am Michael Bice. I am Rainy Knudsen. Number 5. So, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Do you know how to pronounce this? Chirality. Chir but, but it could Chirality? be Chirality. Like Chirality. in Chimera, right? This is a show curated by Car Carissa Terranova in Dallas. It's at Gray Matters. We're picking it because of this charming title that we don't know how to pronounce. And also it had kind of a breathtaking um, press release. Yeah. So <laughs> art meets science in chirality, defiant mirror images. So do you know what this chirality is? Chiral or chiral forms have asymmetrical Are you symmetry this from the press release. There's invoking two agency in terms of dynamics of the chiral form, chiral form. The exhibition sets in relief new models of form making. So chiral, individuation. So chiral or chiral is like a scientific term, but it has nothing to do with any of this other stuff. This agency business, nothing to do agency, with agency, sugar. They're talking about sugar. Edibles, smells, and drugs provide examples of chirality. Yeah. How, what does this have to do with any of the art? Well, here's what we do know. Ellen Levy, Jeff Gibbons, Luke Harnden, Trent Strau... Strahan. Strahan. Okay. Alan and Michael Fleming, and Steve Oshervitz. Is this the same. Is this like the Neo-Hoodoo show at the Menil where the theme was so broad that you could kind of throw anything at it and it would fit? That Man, I, I could be a curator. I could do this. Dang. Number four is The Thin Line at Cinnabar Gallery in San Antonio. So The Thin Line... Um, Fancy names in this show. So Louise, Louise Bourgeois. Louise Bourgeois, who Bar. I'm a big fan of. Um, Agnes Martin. What's, not so big a fan of. What's right? not? To, you, like Lu, you like Agnes Martin less than Louise Bourgeois? Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. I love Louise Bourgeois. She's crazy. She's totally Freudian. I love that stuff. It's the this, best of modernism. Uh, it's all. It looks fairly minimal. There so are other. It, it's but it's all women artists. It's all female artists. So it has something to do with that kind of counter to the male minimalism, you know, embodied in artists like Ava Hess. And number three Sarah is Welch. Sarah Welch at Box Thirteen. Um, uh, so Sarah Welch is is an illustrator. She does a lot of illustration in she Houston. She does comics. She does the comics and zines and graphic novels. And although I am constantly worried about the youth, um, one of the places where I see a lot of fun stuff going on is like graphic novels, um, storytelling. You know, more pictures, less abstraction. I'm all for it's it. All, I think she. It, I think she draws well. It's all gonna be okay. <sighs> okay. All right, number two. two. Oh, this is. Let me let you do this. This is a show at the Manil Collection. Speaking of the Manil Collection, something delicious. Something. The title is it's... "Affecting Presence and the Pursuit of Delicious Experiences." It's a terrible title. But here's the deal. This is just a. It, it's just a collection show. But being the Manil Collection, they have all of these things that you haven't seen that are amazing and fantastic. The installation is every bit as pretentious and insufferable as the title. So the installation essentially it ruined, ruined it for you. It ruined it for me. But I respect them trying to get away from the white cube. I, the walls are dark. The th the entrance with the with the sort of um, the tunnel. The tunnel. It's but a, you know, that's not the first time that 19th century drawing show had like projected signatures of the artists on the wall. So like Van Gogh's signature at the in Manil? vinyl. At the Manil, yeah. No. Oh, yes. Number one is Number Ed one, Blackburn. Number one, Ed Blackburn. And he is at... He's at uh, Rudolph Project's Art Scan Gallery. So, you, now, he taught you. Well, I, I went through all of undergrad. Ed Blackburn teaches at UNT. I think he still does. And... I went through all of undergrad without managing to take a class from him, but I've always liked was his that, work. Was that on purpose? No. Um, his work is very, it, it has kind of this classic pop art look. It's, mm -hmm. it's got sort of a Roy Lichtenstein feel to it, but he, he investigates movies and popular culture. And the work is really enjoyable. It is good. And, you know, I mean, I think that artists who've been there doing it for so long with a consistency of practice is a good thing. I agree. Go see some art. Go see some art.